And effectively, I mean, in, our, in language of modern times, they basically um, split people up by their, what they describe as community, religion, caste, and effectively big them up to say, you know, you guys are the best things to slice bread. And that, right. and that was being done on a, you know, continuous basis for many, many years. You know, for, for by the time the First World War came about, for example, the British had controlled the Punjab and their, you know, soldiery for 60 years, so that's six decades. And we're right. talking at a time where, you know, there's telephones and things like that. They had complete control of information. Mm. So they were able to effectively mould these soldiers into what they wanted them to be. Why would they want to split them up by like religion, caste, etc.? Well, I'm, I'm assuming they they try to create some kind of um, hierarchy. Is that the yes, word? Effectively, or some sense yeah. of importance or power? Yeah, yeah effectively, and also um, by splitting them up by the different religions, and and in some religions cases by caste as well, they were able to keep their caste rules. So, you know, for example, if it was a Muslim regiment, you know, they were allowed, they would get, you know, halal meat, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So, it, so that then, then these, and one thing to remember is a lot of these soldiers who were in the army before and then joined subsequently during the war was, were yeah. poor. Firstly, they were poor. Secondly, they were also illiterate. So they were going to a place where they felt at home. They, they were, all their comforts would have been looked after for their particular community. And in that way, they engendered a lot of loyalty. So a lot of people always want, you know, why do these people fight for the British? Well, they they engendered loyalty through many, many different means. And that was one of them. Hmm. When it comes to the whole casting, it's, it's kind of weird how this whole like power complex has been built back then. And, it's, and people still kind of cling on to it today. Um, and there's yeah. still that thing seen within Sikhism. And it's just it's just funny how that was embedded in them years ago and then people still loud of that as like a thing to be proud of today and i yeah. don't think people know that that's one of the, the potential origins of it really in terms of creating this hierarchy or whatever yeah. um that's yeah. that's one of the one of the places it came from i think if people knew that they probably yeah. stop stop talking about it in such high terms so one of the things that um um speaking about what you just said was the the different regiments um some regiments had different platoons or companies within them which would be religiously specific specific in the Sikh regiments they tended to go for what they call Jat Sikhs I'm not 100% sure why they particularly picked that community maybe because of numbers maybe because of the historical significance of who they felt they were and um, they obviously knew about Sikh history they knew about the Sikh religion I'll, I'll, I'll uh, probably go into that maybe into in another question mm -hmm. um, but then they 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 then effectively, as you said, they, they promoted and those those particular castes to, to be into those regiments. So particular regiments would be known for being jut seat regiments. And they'd get them to do particular pieces of work and particular pieces of soldiery. And also in the in the actual community itself, they'd they'd get them to do important um jobs such as um they used to build these, they built these um what they called canal colonies. And they used they they would want Sikhs Jat Sikhs to go and do those things, and then they, those Jat Sikhs would then inherit that land or start working that land, um, and that actually a lot of that land now is in Pakistan. Um, but they yeah, were called, is, yeah. Those, those canal colonies were 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 something again. They 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 wanted Jat Sikhs to be to do because of their because of their farming history as well. Again, you know, promoting them to be something distinct, just and and you know, nationalizing that particular community. Wow, that's. That's quite quite surprising, but you can see why there's power within it because I'm assuming in Punjab, in a place that's full of Jats, aka farmers, um, there's obviously going to be a bigger proportion of them to pit from than, say, yeah. other castes. And yeah. they're probably more likely to be willing to go to war because they're in a rural area and they haven't seen, I'm assuming, much of Punjab, let alone the world. So they're thinking it's an opportunity to go and see different things, whether it's in obviously circumstances, mm. it's a chance to get out there and just try, try something out as bad as it sounds. But yeah. it, it kind of yeah. gave him an out. I think you've mentioned this in a few of your letters saying how a lot of them were just in awe of the things that they'd seen because they'd literally left the motherland and mm. they were able to go and just see other parts of the world. Yeah, yeah, no, very much so. Um, and there was also, I mean, I, I, I'll I'll mention it now, if I, in case I don't mention it before. During mm -hmm. the during the Raj period, um, well, 
1860 to about 1947. When you say the Raj period, so the British Raj, what does that actually mean? Because they're going to be referencing it a little bit about this. Yeah, so the so the British Raj. Um, when I talk about that, I mean I mean sort of the coverage of what they call British India, so controlling mm-hmm. what they call British India, which is today, <clears throat> excuse me, um, Pakistan, Bangladesh, India, and actually Burma as well. It was all it was all in one place, um, one 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 area. Um, they had you know joint um, arrived on the Indian subcontinent probably late sixteen hundreds in the Bengal. And slowly but surely, through through war, through treaties, they yeah. effectively started taking over um, the majority of India, if not everything. Um, and by the time they came to the Punjab, um, that was the last part of India from 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 my from my memory that they took over, and they would have complete, uh, taken over in about eighteen forty nine. So quite late, if you consider things like the earliest battles in the in for Bengal, were, you know, a hundred years before that. Is that because in Punjab it was the hardest place to crack? Um, multiple multiple reasons. Um, apart from it was hard, it was it was going to be hard. They were mm-hmm. also um, had a strong government. They had a strong king, um, as you probably heard of Maharaja Ranjit Singh. Yeah, they obviously had a, um, a strong king, um, and and they basically bided their time until Maharaja Ranjit Singh died, and then mm-hmm. after that there was a bit of chaos in the in, in the sort of court of Lahore. And then, and then they took, you know, they bided their time, and then they started, you know, fighting with them. Then, and effectively, over a five-year period, approximately eighteen forty-five to eighteen forty-nine, from memory, they were able to defeat the Sikhs over over two, you know, very hard-fought wars. Mm-hmm. And that was actually one of the reasons that um, they ha- they put Sikhs up as one of the martial races, because. They they had two very difficult wars against them, and and actually to, for the first time maybe on the Indian subcontinent they actually came close to losing, right? But that was a surprise for them. That was tough for them to understand. But what they but what they did give them was the impetus to then find out why why did these guys give us the hardest fight or a very hard fight? Why were they able to you know fight us to a point where we may may have lost, although eventually they didn't. Yeah, so it was yeah. very important for them to understand the Sikh psyche. The Sikh way of life and things like that. And how did they? And what did they learn from those things of looking into the Sikh psyche? Was it just that we we're like a warrior race? We don't really tend to give up. Yeah, they, I think I think they what we'd call it nowadays. I think you'd probably call it um, sort of racial profiling, mm-hmm. or, or you know, it, you know, it's, it was a gathering of every type of information that you, we could about these this particular group of people. Um, and it started from religion. So they had they had a, um, a person come up from England, England who who then sort of wrote a huge volume, um, six six volume piece around the Sikh religion. It, um, you may have come across it. It's called Macaulay. It's by someone called Macaulay. It's called the Sikh religion. And they and the idea not not necessarily being to understand the Sikh religion and think oh that's something nice, more to do with how can we use this for our benefit. And 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 and, this, and they did. You know, they they were able to um, manipulate some of the text to make it sound as if the master may be the British Empire rather than what we what we might as we describe as God. So they were able to try and they were they tried to use religious texts for their own benefit against the Sikhs. Oh, so they tried to like change the wording of it to make it seem like it was or the interpretation okay. of it or the interpretation of it. I'd say. So that was it was very clever. So, for example, if you have the word, the, you know, the master, you know, the master could have been changed. It could have been interpreted as, you know, the British, because we are now your master. Right, I see. For example, um, I didn't go too much into that into the book in the book, but there is a huge there, well, there, there was a huge push into, you know, trying to effectively manipulate people. There was. Um, yeah, I understand. noticed that in your introduction, as you said. Yeah, um, because you can't. Because you can't control this many people with you know only a few yeah. only a few British people there. 